Hello everyone, and welcome to Weekend Workshops presented by the Wichita Falls Museum of Art at MSU Texas. In the tradition of makerspaces, we are here to learn the basics of a new medium and then make it your own. Today, we are going to be focusing on cyanotypes, also called blueprints. Blueprints and the process to make them was actually uh, discovered by a man named Sir John Herschel back in 1842. Um, and though he developed the process, it, it was actually really heavily used in an artistic and photographic way by a woman named Anna Atkins, um, who many consider to be the first female photographer. She would use this process to take photos of uh, plants. She was a botanist. And so cyanotypes, or and the process of blueprinting, is a very early photography process. So basically what we're doing is we're taking a mixture of chemicals. You can order cyanotype kits off of uh, various online retailers. Just search cyanotype kit, spelled just like that. And what it's going to do is you're going to be shipped <clears throat> two different bottles in dry chemicals. You'll fill them up with water all the way to the top, shake them up really, really well, and then you mix them in equal parts and it results in a chemical that when applied to a surface that will absorb it, such as watercolor paper or fabric, it, when it's dry, it becomes photoreactive. And this chemical will then re react with ultraviolet light. Um, you can get ultraviolet light from the sun or from ultraviolet lamps. Or I've even heard of some artists using old tanning beds to make very, very large cyanotype prints. So in front of me, I have a bunch of different materials. We'll go over them as we use them. But I've taken the chemicals out of these two bottles, and I've already pre-poured them in equal parts in these small containers. So what we have to do is we have to take them, mix them together, Once you have them mixed, it's going to result in like a, almost like a lime green liquid. And we can take this and we can apply it directly to the surface of whatever it is that you want to print on. With watercolor paper, I'm just going to use a brush. With fabric, um, I've seen people, uh, say, dunk a handkerchief in a mixture of this. I've, uh, I've also experimented with a spray bottle in order to coat an even coating of the chemical on the, on the surface of cloth, but I'm just going to use a brush today. You can go pretty thin with it, um, and a little bit goes a pretty long way. I like to kind of leave the brush strokes in. I think it makes it a little bit more interesting once it's dry. But once we've coated our paper, that paper won't be reactive to ultraviolet light until it's dry. So you have to let it dry, and in the meantime, I'm going to leave it taped right down to this backing board. Um, we are introducing liquid to paper. We're going to try and prevent warping and twisting as much as possible, so we're just going to leave it taped down through this entire process. But once it is dry, and this one was coated a little bit more heavily, but you're going to be left with a piece of paper that has this developing fluid painted across its surface. From here, we can then take different objects, really anything that will block the light. Could be feathers, could be paintbrushes, could be buttons, could be scissors, it could be anything that you want. The idea is that whatever you place on the surface while it's being exposed to light, Whatever is placed on the surface will block ultraviolet light from hitting the surface, and you're basically printing with shadows. Okay, So wherever you block the light, it's going to remain the original color of the paper, while everything else is going to turn this nice blue. From what I've found, when you have your composition all laid out, if you have something like a piece of glass or a piece of plexiglass, something similar with these really light objects, if you put that over top of it, 
it will prevent the wind from blowing it away. But once you've taken your board and laid out all of your pieces and put it outside to sit in the sun, on a very, very sunny day, we are going to wait about 7 to 10 minutes, and that will give us a nice print on a more cloudy day. You're going to have to wait probably 20 to 40 minutes. You'll be able to tell because after your composition has been laying out in the sun for a little while, it starts to turn kind of silvery. And you'll know that it's about done developing because it takes on the silvery moss green type color or sage green kind of color. So once you've exposed it to the sunlight, this piece has been sitting outside for seven minutes. I've brought it inside. You can see I have a feather with a piece of plexiglass over top of it. Once you bring it inside, we're going to clear everything off of the piece of paper. And when you do, you'll already see an imprint of what has been printed there. But what you're going to want to do, if you just leave this exposed to the light, it's just going to, the entire thing is going to turn this dark blue. So what we have to do is we have to use water and rinse off all of the developing fluid that's still fresh, that still hasn't been exposed to the light. In order to do this, I actually like doing it under sink, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to use this tub of water. But I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to use water all over the surface to try and remove as much of that developing fluid as possible. If you can see, you'll see the water coming off of it is that lime green. You'll want to keep going until all of that lime green is gone. You want to make sure that your water is running clear. This is a lot easier to do under a sink. But I'm just going to keep working at it very gently with a soft brush because we don't want to tear up the paper too much. And I'm just going to keep going until the liquid that comes off of it starts to run a little bit more clear. Okay, so our piece is now, is now rinsed. You can clearly see the feather that we have printed on it. And you can see that we, we have this nice rich blue going on. But if you look at examples that have sat for a while, they're more saturated with blue. It's a stronger blue. It's a richer blue. And in time, this one that we just made will turn into that nice, rich navy blue. But if you want to speed it up, all it requires is some water. I just kind of filled up an old coffee can, and I put in a splash of hydrogen peroxide. Not a whole lot. And what that hydrogen peroxide is going to do is it's going to introduce oxygen onto the surface and that it's going to oxidate the developing fluid. And it's going to turn it a really, really rich dark blue immediately. You can see that streak I just put in. Okay, so now... It's this nice, rich, blueprint blue. We're just going to give it one last rinse with water just to get any extra hydrogen peroxide off of it. And then it's done. I'm going to leave this... I'm going to leave this tape to the board until it's fully dry. If you take it off of the board before it's dry, it's going to dry in a, in a curled up, twisted kind of way because it's wet paper. But by letting it fully dry while it's taped down, you'll be in good shape, and it should dry reasonably flat. As a quick note on peeling tape off of boards, when you are peeling tape up, peel away from your piece of paper, okay? Because when you peel away from the piece of paper, if it were to tear the paper at all, it will tear away from your masterpiece rather than into it. So remember to peel your tape away from your piece of art. And with that, that concludes this lesson on creating cyanotypes.
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you've been inspired to give this early method of photography a try. It is a lot of fun and it's, it's very easy to dive into. If you didn't want to mix up your own chemicals, they do sell pre-treated paper and pre-treated fabric. So there are lots of options for getting going with blueprinting. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned a lot and I hope that you have fun with it. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.